Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curves. We're going to talk about what Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curves actually are, how they can be used to help study rates of reactions, and look at how the shapes of Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curves change depending on the temperature and the concentration of molecules in a system. We will also have a look at the impact of using a catalyst on the shape of a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. Before we talk in detail about Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Rates of reaction describe how quickly reactions are occurring. They can be measured in terms of the speed at which reactant concentration decreases or the speed at which product concentration increases, given the units mole per decimeter cubed per second. In order for a reaction between two substances to occur, particles of each must collide together. If a collision between the two happens with enough energy, the activation energy, and this leads to the formation of new products, the collision is described as successful. The greater the frequency of these successful collisions occur in per second, the faster the rate of the reaction. Activation energy refers to the minimum amount of energy that particles must collide with in order for a reaction to occur. Temperature is a measure of the heat content of a system. It is effectively measuring the average kinetic energy of particles within it. The higher the temperature, the more kinetic energy particles have, and the faster they are moving and vibrating. Recap done? Let's go! In a container full of gas, molecules are moving around and constantly bumping into each other and colliding. When these collisions happen, the molecules exchange energy, effectively swapping energy between themselves. This means every time one molecule collides with another, it may lose a little bit or gain a little bit of energy. The combined energy of both molecules will be the same as before the collision. No extra energy is created or lost, it's just redistributed between the molecules as they collide. As a result, two colliding molecules can end up having different energies to each other after they collide. And because of this, the total amount of energy available for all gas molecules in a container will never end up being evenly distributed amongst all of the molecules. At any one moment in time, some molecules will have more energy than others and, as a result, will move with a faster speed. You can never say for certain exactly how all the energy will be shared out. However, there is a high probability that most molecules will move, on average, with similar speeds, and therefore have similar energies. Two scientists called Maxwell and Boltzmann combined probability theory, the study of how likely things are to happen, and the kinetic theory of gases, how gas molecules are constantly bumping into each other. They did this to predict how the energy available to a group of gas molecules is most likely to be distributed and shared amongst them. The results can be plotted on a graph called a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. Now, I should point out here that in order to figure out these distributions, Maxwell and Boltzmann had to model gases as ideal gases, meaning it is assumed that the gas molecules are effectively tiny little spheres that only bump into each other with perfectly elastic collisions. Overall, no energy is lost or gained in the collisions, and we ignore any attraction or repulsion that may arise between molecules. Their results, however, remain very close to how energy is distributed amongst non-ideal gases and in particles in solutions, meaning they can be used in the real world to help explain how rates of reactions are affected by changes in temperature, concentration of molecules, and activation energy. Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curves always have the same basic shape, with some key features. The y-axis represents the number of molecules, or proportion of molecules, in the system. It is sometimes labelled in different ways, but essentially always refers to the same thing, the number of molecules. The x-axis represents kinetic energy, sometimes just 
stated as energy, increasing from left to right. What the curves show us then is the number of molecules likely to have a given amount of energy at any one moment in time, with the total area under the whole curve being proportional to the total number of molecules in the system. Meaning, if the number of molecules in the system doubles, the area under the curve must also double. Or, if the number of molecules in the system halves, the area under the curve must also halve. The highest point of the curve shows the energy that most molecules are likely to have. It is really important to remember that this is all based on probability. The exact individual energies of all gas molecules are constantly changing as they are bumping into each other all the time. It's just that on average, at any one moment in time, most molecules are likely to have the amount of energy shown by the highest point of the curve. The curves are never symmetrical. A curve will always start at zero as no gas molecules can ever have no energy. They will always be moving and the curve will always stay above zero after this point, as we can never say for certain that no particles will have very high amounts of energy, even if the chance is very low. The activation energy for a given reaction can be shown on the x-axis at whatever energy value the activation energy is. The area under the curve past this point on the x-axis represents the number of particles in the system that have the required activation energy and can react. As you can see, the proportion of molecules in a system that have the required activation energy is very small compared to the total number of molecules present. Changing the temperature of molecules in a system has an impact on the distribution of energy amongst the molecules and this impact can be shown using Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curves. If the temperature of a system is increased, there is now more energy available that is shared amongst the same number of molecules. In such cases, the total area under a Maxwell distribution curve must stay the same, as remember, the area under the curve is proportional to the number of molecules in the system and the temperature changing has no impact on the total number of molecules present. However, the shape of the curve will change because the molecules in the system now have more energy available than at a lower temperature. And as a result, the shape of the curve will shift slightly to the right and the highest point on the graph becomes slightly lower than before as more molecules are likely to have higher energies across a slightly greater range than before, and fewer molecules are likely to have lower energies. As activation energy remains the same, the proportion of particles with the required activation energy, the area under the curve to the right of the activation energy mark, increases. From collision theory, we know that if more particles are colliding per second with the required activation energy, the frequency of successful collisions increases and therefore the rate of reaction increases as well. If the concentration of molecules is increased, the total number of molecules in a system also increases, meaning the area under the curve has to increase as well. For example, if the concentration of molecules doubles, the area under the curve must also double as twice the concentration means twice the number of molecules in the same volume. However, the average energy of the molecules in the system doesn't change, as only temperature changes can affect the amount of energy the molecules have and share. As a result, the distribution of energy in the system remains the same as before. It's just that there are more molecules with the same distribution, giving the same shaped curve just a bit bigger. There are now more molecules with the required activation energy than before the concentration was increased, increasing the rate of reaction. However, as a proportion of the total number of molecules present, the number of molecules with the required activation energy is the same. As in, if 5% of molecules had the required activation energy before the concentration was increased, it would still be 5% of all molecules to have the required activation energy after the concentration was increased. 
If the activation energy of a reaction is lowered by using a catalyst, then more molecules end up having the required activation energy. The shape of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve remains the same as neither the temperature or concentration is being changed. The only difference is where the activation energy mark is on the x-axis. As a catalyst decreases the activation energy for a given reaction, the mark moves to the left and the area under the curve past this point to the right increases. A greater proportion of molecules colliding with the required activation energy means an increase in the frequency of successful collisions, and therefore an increase in the rate of reaction. So, to summarise, gas molecules are constantly colliding and changing speeds, meaning the energy within a system won't ever be evenly distributed or shared amongst the molecules within it. At any one moment in time, some molecules will be moving faster than others, have more energy, and some molecules will be moving slower than others, have less energy. Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curves are used to show how the energy in a system of ideal gas molecules is most likely to be distributed at any one moment in time. The y-axis is based on the number or proportion of molecules, and the x-axis, energy. The area under the curve is proportional to the total number of molecules in the system. The shapes of Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curves always look the same, and despite the fact they are based on ideal gases, the distributions calculated are very similar to those for non-ideal gases and aqueous particles. The highest point on the curve shows the energy that most molecules are likely to have at any one moment. The curve isn't symmetrical, it will always start at zero, no gas molecules have zero energy, as they have to be moving, and the y-axis will always stay above zero after this. Activation energy can be shown on the x-axis, and the area under the curve past this point represents the number or proportion of molecules in the system that have the required activation energy and can react. Increasing the temperature of a system means the same number of molecules have, on average, more energy, and as a result, more particles are likely to have higher energies than at lower temperatures, shifting the peak of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve a little to the right and squashing it down slightly. As a result, there will be a higher proportion of molecules with the required activation energy, explaining the higher frequency of successful collisions and rates of reactions at higher temperatures. The total area under the curve, however, will always remain the same as change in temperature doesn't change the number of molecules present. Increasing the concentration of molecules in a system means more molecules in total, and this does increase the area under a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. If the temperature is the same, however, the average kinetic energy of molecules in the system is also the same, meaning the same distribution of energy and the same shaped curve, just with a larger area underneath. There are now more molecules with the required activation energy, given a higher frequency of successful collisions. However, the proportion of molecules with required activation energy compared to those without remains the same as for a lower concentration. Decreasing the activation energy for a reaction by using a catalyst has no impact on the number of molecules in the system, the area under the curve, or the average kinetic energy of the molecules, the shape of the curve. It does, however, increase the proportion of molecules that have the required activation energy, increasing the frequency of successful collisions and the rate of the reaction. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.